Hi guys, let's have a look at how to make a retro 80s book cover template in Affinity Photo. Now this can be just a template or a finished product. That's of course in, is entirely up to you. Now this will work equally well on the desktop or on your iPad. And it's an excellent little tutorial, but there's a lot to it. So let's take our time and work through it slowly. In this book cover template, Affinity Photo Tutorial will create a retro 80s book cover design. You can use this book cover design template to explore a whole host of book cover ideas, whatever your aesthetic requirements. So let's dive right in. You'll need the following resources in order to complete the project. Retro Landscape Kit, 80s Retro Photoshop Text Effects, the Painter Script font, the Jerker Block font, and the Beauty Salon Modern font duo, and George Sands Geometric Typefaces. These are all available from Envato Elements, possibly other places, but certainly I use the ones from Envato. Keep in mind that you can also follow these steps with your own assets and designs. Feel free to use any fonts or imagery of your choice, but of course this if this one here, this project we're using, is retro graphics from the 80s. So really, that's probably what we're going to stick with. Now, how do book covers work? First, a bit of technical stuff. Your book cover template is going to vary depending on several factors, such as the size of your printed book. Make sure to note these dimensions, as you'll need to base a lot of your decisions on this. The size of your book spine. Now think about this, a longer book is generally thicker than a shorter book. The type of binding. If your book, is your book a hard cover with a jacket? Maybe it's perfect bound, which is a soft cover book, the type of book you see in airport lounges. This, in <clears throat> this information can feel very overwhelming for a beginner. Many printers such as KDP and Lulu and many others will even offer templates with guides to help you as you begin your design. But don't feel overwhelmed, just take your time. Think about your book. If your book is 5 by 6, it's going to have different count of pages than a book, the same textbook that's um, 9 by 6. So you're going to have different size spines. That's fairly easily calculated. And there are many um, uh, calculators around that will help you do that, including some of the videos that I've previously made. Now, some of the basic terms used when printing a book cover, these are some to note. The trim size. Don't be mistaken thinking the trim size is what you start with. The trim size is what your book looks like on the bookshelf. They're the final dimensions after everything's been trimmed off. So, for example, a 6 by 9 inch print book would have a 6 by 9 inch print size. The bleed extends beyond the trim size. So, for example, your 6 by 9 inch print might require a 0 0.125 inch bleed around all edges for images that extend the full height and width of the printed area. And you should do this. If you're putting an image on your front cover, Make sure it extends right out to the edge of the bleed lines. And you'll have guidelines for that. You can see them there, the blue lines. There are your bleed lines. Right out to the edge is the white area between the blue line and the edge where you can see the black border. Don't worry about the black border. That's just background on the image. The safe area... This is smaller than your trim size. Now most documents have a margin which we can use to leave space around the perimeter of our work. The safe area is the white part of the page inside those pink coloured margins there. The margins butt up to the bleed line so from the outer edge of the margin across that yellow creamy colour that's going to be chopped off anyway. And that's where your cover images should go to. 
but if you've got text, for example, a 6x9 with bleed and margins that's written there, if that goes into the pink, it may get trimmed a little bit if the printer's cutting press is not exactly accurate. And if it's in the yellow part, it certainly will be cut right off. Now, don't panic. The size of your book's spine will vary based on the number of pages and the paper type. Typically, a larger book will have a thicker spine. There are many spine, and that's misspelt, never mind, calculators on the internet and KDP has an excellent one. Now, calculate our example. Let's not labour too much on that. Let's take what we've learned and use it to calculate an example. Let's say you plan to self-publish your book and you'd like to work with a US trade size book. That's 6 by 9 inches. We'll create a perfect bound soft cover book. Let's work with a 0.125 bleed around all sides. Remember this extends beyond our trim size or the final size of the book. And let's make our spine half an inch wide, 0.5 inch. This is a general estimation for a book with 220 pages using a rather thin standard paper weight. Look for an online spine calculator or ask your printer for suggestions. So we'll need to add this half inch to our overall width. Keep in mind that your cover has a front and back page. This means we need to add, like this, sample width calculation. Six inch wide for the front, plus half inch wide for the spine, plus six inch wide for the back, plus 0.25 for the total bleed area on both sides. Remember that 0.125 added together for the left and right hand side is 0.25. Wow, love the maths. Now the sample height calculation, really easy. The book trim size is 9 inches high, so you just need to add 0.25 for the bleed area on the top and bottom. That's not 0.25 at the top and 0.25 at the bottom. That's 0.125 added twice gives you 0.25. So this would make our book cover template 9.25 high by 12.75 wide. These are the dimensions we need to use when we create our design document. Again, keep in mind that this is an example scenario. Your book could vary based on dimensions, page length, paper choices and other factors. But it's as simple as that. Let's say, for example, if I might take a moment, that your cover is 5 inches wide and hmm, 8 inches high. So you've got 5 inches wide plus 0.5 for the spine that you've calculated plus 5 inches wide for the back, and 0.25 for the total bleed. That's easy. You just add the bits together. Now you'll probably do it 50 times before you get it right, but never mind. What we do when we come to Affinity Photo is set it up like this. Open up Affinity Photo. Create a new document by going to File, New. This will bring up the dialog box shown. And you can use the example we just explored. Set the document width to 12.75 inches and the height to 9.25 inches. Set the resolution to 300 dpi RGB color mode. Now I know lots of people say, oh no, no, it's going to the printer. It needs to be CMYK. Save yourself some heartache and set it to RGB8. That color mode will suffice for this exercise. Now margins of point... 0.5 except for the bottom margin of 0.75 which defaults to 7.5. Now I've reset that to 0.5 but keep in mind that further down the track we're going to change that. But for now that's good. Click create when you have input all of your desired values. Our, doc our document looks like a large blank page. Let's start by creating some guides so we know where the bleed, trim and safe areas are in our composition. This is an interesting exercise. Go to View and Guides Manager and you can see it in the image there. 
using the add guides option and that's the little page with the folded corner on it that's right at the bottom of that blue rectangle with the rubbish bin and the little page click on that and you can it will automatically add a guide in the center of the page you can drag that to wherever you want so using the add guide options input 0.125 around each side these markers will show us the bleed area and where the book cover will be trimmed. You can already see the margins because the document set up put those in. You can actually leave them out for, at the start because you can put them in later. It's up to you. Those margins are actually going to end up the wrong size but I wanted to leave them there so you can see what happens when you start the document off like that. Once you're happy with your bleed guides, let's move to the next set of guides. And we can add them all in from here. And there we go. Following the guides manager shown on the right, including changing the margins from 0.5 to 0.35, you can see the margins there in that column guides and margins. So you can set all your margins to 0.35. Now we can clearly see where the spine is in our composition. Once you've got all those vertic once you've got all those guides in, horizontal and vertical guides, you can see the spine of the book shows up. Now this is a lot of information. So some book cover template designs will use visual cues to help make these guides clearer. This can also be a great way to check your work. Open up your Layers panel by going to the Layers and New Layers. Create a new layer and call it Bleeds. Toggle Snapping On. Make sure it's on if it isn't already. Make sure Snap to Guides is also on. This makes your life a lot easier. And you can see it in the, in the um, drop down there. Um, you've got things that looks like a magnet up the top. That's your guide, snapping guides on and off. Enable snapping. And snap to guides is about halfway down. Snap to grid, snap to baseline grid, snap to guides. They're the two main ones that you need. There's a few others there that help you. Now, using the rectangular mark tool to select our bleed areas, because it will snap to our guides, with this area selected, use the Paint Bucket tool, or the Flood Fill tool, I should say, to fill it with a colour of your choice. We can repeat this process to define any part of our layout we like. In the example below, the light yellow colour visually represents the bleed. The light pink is the margin space, and the dark grey is the spine. Note these colours will not be printed if you remember to turn off that layer. They're for visual reference only. Place them all in a group so you can turn them off easily before export. And you can see over on the right hand side in the layers panel, I've got them, I've got a, a group there called guide colours. Now it's not expanded at the moment, but you will see it later on. That really helps. Um, when you're trying to design your document to remember where things go. Now you've made it through all that setup, phew, you can freely use the template to experiment with any visual style you'd like. Just remember to save the document first as a template and don't save your finished document over the top of that. In this tutorial we'll focus specifically on an 80s book cover. That's like 80s graphics. So we need to think about what defines that aesthetic. We could use things like saturated bright neon colours, geometric shapes, eccentric patterns, often with busy use of colour and shape, chrome and neon glow effects, visual contrast and noise, contrasting type, like block with script. When in doubt, take some time to do some visual research. This applies regardless of your chosen aesthetic. If you observe, you can identify what works and why. And there's no better place for doing this than your local public library. 
They've got millions of books on every subject, fiction and fact. If you're in the science fiction genre, perhaps trawl through their shelves and see what grabs your eye and what doesn't. What book covers you think, oh, how did they do this? But others will say, wow, that is something. So use those ones as your guide. Let's start with an example from Envato Elements. As I say, this is where I got all this from, all this, um, all the graphics elements. It contains an 80s themed asset that we can experiment with. And there's the 80s scenes element. Now, beginning our cover design. To begin, copy and paste, or better still, place one of the images into your book design template. I chose one of the pre-made scenes from that particular resource kit. You'll notice that Affinity Photo placed it onto a new layer in my layers panel. For organization's sake, I named this layer image. I mean, that's pretty blunt and straightforward. It is an image. Modifying the image, which is what we need to do. Now you can see that that image doesn't look the same as the previous imported image. Using the Move tool, move and adjust the imagery until you're happy with its placement on the front and back covers. Duplicate the image by duplicating the image layer and then position them separately. Then position the whole lot lower on the canvas. Notice your bleed trim and margin guides will show through. That's because I set those to multiply so they show through your document you can see where everything is and where it will lay now you've got margins there because you've got a spine in the middle but there's no trim on the spine of course the inside part of your book is not trimmed it's the outside edge so your margins go right up to your spine now you don't want your document to actually be you certainly don't want any important information inside that margin area next to the spine because that's where the spine fold will be. Um, that's where your book page opens up. So no important information in there. That's why you've got the margin guidelines. Now, since lowering the image's levels, a large blank spot at the top appears. That needs adjustment. Select this space with the rectangular mark tool and fill it with black using the flood fill tool. You can put a gradient fill into this to merge the black with the dark blue of the sky if you like. Now adding the title. This is one of the strongest points of emphasis on a book cover design. So we want it to stand out. For this demonstration we'll use the Affinity Photo text effect shown. It's got plenty of options to help capture that 80s aesthetic. Text effects can be a simple and fun way to experiment with advanced visuals. In this case, I used the font jerker for the word retro and the font the painter for the word story time. You could use any font you prefer here that's one of the cool parts of working with pre-made text effects. You simply double click to go inside of the smart object, embedded object. Edit your text and then check out the result. Open the effect you want to modify in another Affinity Photo tab. Then bring the newly created 80s text over to the book cover template. Select the layers and copy them, then go to your book template tab and paste the layers in place. Adjust them to suit. Notice that I've grouped a text into a layer called cover front. I've set its tag color to blue, which doesn't actually show up there, but never mind. Now those retro 
story time, that text as you first find it is in a PSD file. Don't be daunted by the fact that that may appear difficult. You'll get used to using it. The rest of the text on the front cover doesn't need to stand out as much, but it still needs to match. Use the text tool to add more text to your cover. Use the font George Sands Geometric for the tagline at the top of the cover. It has a geometric look that matches the overall aesthetic. I used the font Beauty Salon Modern for the author's name at the bottom of the cover. Now let's take a look at our back cover. This is usually a place where we can sell our content to potential readers. Let's start off with an image. I used this stock image from Pixabay in the stock studio on Affinity Photo. Drag your image onto your book cover template and resize it using the Transform Studio. You only want a little picture there after all. And on your book, that could be a picture of you. Let's push the aesthetic here further. Tilt the image by going to the Edit and Free Transform area, your Transform area, and rotate the image slightly. Then create a neon pink square behind the image. To do so, draw a rectangle with the Rectangle tool and fill it with the Flood Fill tool. Tilt the image until you're happy with its arrangement. Use the Transform tool again to do this. To match our neon pink square, I created a larger neon pink rectangle. This is a great space for some supplemental text. Create this shape using the rectangle tool again. Then, placing a frame text over the rectangle, create some text using the frame text tool. I used the font Georgia Sands Geometric to keep it the same as the text on the other part of the book. Continue to add text to your composition using the text tool. I added some supplemental type next to our image. This is in the front George Sands Geometric again, so it matches my other supplemental types. You don't want too many different font types on your cover. Add a headline on top of the neon pink rectangle. This is type that should stand out, so use the font Beauty Salon Modern again. This choice matches the author's name on the front cover. Let's continue that trend by pulling more influence from the co front cover. Copy part of the title, the pink text that says story time, and reuse it for a headline on the back. Using common elements like this can help visually unify your composition and you can see that it is visually unified. From the past is the same type of text as story time on the front. There's a lot of geometric influence here, so let's try a geometric accent to bring even more emphasis to our top headline on the back cover. So draw a triangular selection, then fill this selection with white using the flood fill tool. As you design, you may want to toggle your guides on and off, so you can preview your work without them. To do so, go to View, Show Margins and Show Guides. If they're checked, the guides will be visible. You can toggle off visibility on our margin colours in our layers. In the example below, or the one shown to the right, the guides are hidden. So is the visual margin space. We can still see a blue overlay for our bleed. Again, I say ignore the black board around it because that's the background to the image that I cut from the page. We can also go back to our spine layer and change the colour. In this case, I made the spine a solid black colour. Use the flood fill tool to do so. We're going to change that slightly in a moment. Add text to the spine of your book cover design using the type tool. 
use George Sands Geometric here once again so the font choice would match the rest of the composition. Remember, you can experiment with each layer's blending mode. In this case, select the black spine and set the blending mode to multiply. Then lower the opacity so it has a softer presence. Now you can see that if you look carefully at the image, you can now see some of the front and back cover imagery showing through the spine slightly. In finalising this design, toggle visibility on for the margins layer. This is not something that will print in the final product. However, it can help visually gauge the placement of content in relation to the trim. You can also rely on your guides to help you in this way. Make sure to keep key content like text and your barcode in this safe area. You can see the purple squared at a slight angle behind the girl with the headphones on. That's right on the edge of the margin. I had to move that in so it's inside the margin. The word retro on the front cover, I had to move it slightly to the right so it fits just inside the margin. I don't want anything over the margin. Now most book covers have a barcode. Make sure to check with your printer or publishing requirements for these specs. For example, if self-publishing on Amazon, make sure your barcode is two inches wide by an inch and a half high. That's a fairly standard size, really. You can create a new document of this size and then copy and paste it into your book cover template. Then you know your sizing is right. You can get, um, you can download a template from KDP that exactly matches your book size. And I'll show you that now. For example, if self-publishing on Amazon, make sure your barcode is two inches wide by inch and a half, inch 1.2 inches high. You can create a new document of this size in KDP and then copy and paste it into your book cover template. You can see it there, it's right on the top of the layers panel. And I've changed the mode to multiply. So you can see it through your document. Now you can see the margins, the spine, you can see the bleed area, and you can also see the KDP document behind it. Now, if you look really carefully at that, depending on the context of your screen, you'll notice that our document, or their document, is slightly wider than our document, ever so slightly in one area. That's because the document I pulled down, I had 200 pages. The document that we've created is 220 pages. So the spine size of the document I put in there from KDP is slightly smaller. That's why it looks slightly out of place. That's an exact example of the effect that a different spine size can have. 20 pages, so you've got 200 pages or 220 pages that will make your book slightly different in size. However, what I wanted to do was to show you there was not only that, but the barcode location and size. So when you put in your barcode, the little white panel, you can see that it's sitting neatly down in the bottom corner of the back cover, right on the margins. So that's probably a good guide for you. And of course, you remove that. You don't leave that KDP thing in there. You can turn it off or remove it altogether. It's just there to show you as a guide. Now, finalising the design, this is the final preview. All guides are turned off you, so you can see exactly what your book cover will look like. There are no guides showing in there. What you have is your back cover, spine and front cover.
very nice. Now when saving your work, make sure to save it where you can find it again. In addition, as this is theoretically a template, export it as a template to your templates folder. If you don't have one, make one now. Keep all your templates in one place. With names you can understand. Don't come back six months from now looking for template 32. You'll probably have 64 template 32s. Next, export as a Photoshop PSD file. Yes, why? Because a PSD file preserves all your layers and all your work. Now, you may want to preserve your layers for others, just in case you need to make adjustments. You might also want to use your book cover template again someday for another book somewhere else in a different program. So now go to File, Export As and save your work in other file types. You'll want to export as a PDF and a PNG and PSD. PDF and PSD preserve your layers and all work within them. And of course you should also have saved as AF photo and exported as AF template. AF photo of course is the file that will naturally occur when you just click on save or save as. We're nearly there. Now how to use a book mock up? Book mock up. Here in Affinity Photo we've designed a flat book cover design. Wouldn't it be nice to actually see our book in action? We can do that with a book cover mock up. Let's test out our work in this mock-up book cover template from, again, Envato Elements. All we need to do is place our book cover design within the mock-up's Smart Objects. Double-click on the Smart Object in the Layers panel. This takes us inside of the object. All we need to do is paste our book cover design into this space and save. Then the mock-up will visually update to display our content. Now we get a taste of how our book will look when it's all printed and ready to go. Pretty neat, right? Now, okay, you've got to fiddle around a little bit with these smart objects. The Affinity Photo Embedded object is slightly different. But once you fiddle about with it, don't do it within this design. Work on it on its own and make sure you keep backups. But once you get the idea of how it works, it's really easy. And I think you'll find I've done a video on this somewhere. Somewhere in my collection of YouTube videos, you'll find one on dealing with mock-ups. That's how your book will look when it's finished and ready to print. That's the end. Creating a book cover template can include a lot of considerations, but it's not so tough once you understand the basics. You'll have to do this probably a couple of times and then it'll be old hat and you'll say, I can do that. Snap the fingers, sit back and enjoy. You can then take these concepts and apply them to any book cover design. Now I hope you enjoyed creating this book cover template using Affinity Photo to design it. If you're looking for fonts, effects, images and other content for your next book cover design, check out Envato Elements. You can find thousands of fonts, photos, graphics, templates, mockups, and more. And they're all included with unlimited downloads option. So, thank you for following along. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it.